Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to talk about one of the biggest challenges that we hear most often from the clients that we work with, which is, how do I get my team to use Asana? A lot of business owners or project managers that have found Asana and they've tried to get their team to use it often struggle with adoption. Maybe they've you know, shown Asana to a few of their team members or they've tried to get their team to adopt and use it, but adoption isn't really there. Maybe the team is uh, still using old tools and systems like email and Slack or Microsoft Teams to communicate and they're not really communicating in Asana. Or maybe that's they're just not using it for their work rather than using tasks and marking them as complete. Again, maybe they're using email and still using old methods to communicate and collaborate on the work. And a tool like Asana it really is only as good as how well the team uses it. If you do have some people on the team that really like it, but you've got others that don't use it and, and aren't, aren't adopting it, then the people that aren't using it drag down everyone else. The people that are using it and like it end up having to use email and other methods of communication to follow up on the work because the people that aren't using it, they're not checking Asana, they're checking their email. So the whole system kind of breaks down. So that's what I'm talking about today. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to post them below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with setting up and optimizing your Asana account, or if you'd like some training for your team, if you want me and my team to come in, train you and your team on how to use Asana, how to actually adopt it successfully, then click the link in the, in the description below to learn more about our Asana consulting options. Now, if we're gonna get your team to adopt Asana, the first thing we have to do is answer the question, why are we using Asana? You need to communicate the answer to this question to your team so they understand what's this all about? Like, why are we using this tool in the first place? If you don't, if you don't answer this question, if you don't explain the value of Asana to the team, they are just gonna sit there and, and be thinking, well, this is just another tool that my boss wants me to use to track what I'm doing and to keep an eye on my work. And, and usually that's not the case. Most people use Asana because they want to increase the transparency of the work, that we want more visibility over who's doing what, the status of the work, so that we don't have to check in with one another the whole time. We don't want to have to meet up and have conference calls all the time to check up on how things are going. Uh, maybe we just want to be more efficient as a team. Maybe we want to standardize our processes and have more SOPs and processes documented in something like Asana. Whatever the reason for you, your team needs to understand how does Asana make their life easier? A tool like Asana shouldn't be a burden to use. If it is, it's probably because they don't understand how to use it. I mean, that's obviously part of the issue, but also they don't understand why they need to be using it in the first place or the value that it, that it provides. Asana really is supposed to make life easier for everyone on the team. So that's the first thing talking to the team and explaining why are we using this tool and how is it gonna make your life easier. By, by them understanding the value of the tool, they are straight away set up to uh, actually want to adopt the tool and they're gonna be much more excited to learn about it. The next step when trying to get your team to use Asana is don't try and do too much with Asana straight out of the gate. Obviously on my channel and when we work with clients, we, we try and get people doing as much of it as, as possible in Asana, and you can run your entire business in Asana as I've talked about in previous videos. But that's not how we wanna start. We wanna start by maybe managing one process or project so that the team understands the value, uh, and that way it's not too intimidating, we're not trying to do too much, and it's not too big of a change all at once. And that way, once they uh, adapt to the new process for that particular thing, then we can gradually use Asana in other areas of the business. So an example of this might be, if you are a client-facing business like mine, I'd recommend one of the first thing you do is to maybe set up a template for, in this case, like here's a new client project template. And uh, you can build out, these are the sections or the phases of the project that we go through. So we typically go through some kind of onboarding process. We go through development, launch, and then SEO optimization or whatever it is. Um, and then you can outline, these are the steps, these are the subtasks, these are the milestones we have to follow. So whatever you do, whether you have a client facing business like mine, or if you manage events or marketing campaigns, or if you manage real estate, 
whatever the main thing of your business, set up a template that standardizes the, the process that you go through for that, for that job or that project that you do on a regular basis. You can then show that to the team and say, look, we've got a template with all the steps that we go through every single time, and we're gonna be able to very clearly see where we're at and who's doing what. Later on, if you want to introduce Asana into other areas of your business, for example, I have this admin and accounting project here. So my accounting team could manage all of their invoicing and accounts receivable and pay payables. If I wanted to use Asana as a CRM, I could have a project uh, to manage all the leads coming into our business. But again, I wouldn't try and do too many of these things at once. Again, I would identify what is the main use case we can apply Asana to, and, uh, and then we can introduce it, Asana to other areas of the business later. Now Asana is a really powerful tool. There's lots of bells and whistles and features that we can play with. But when you are introducing Asana to your team, you wanna keep it really simple, really basic, so that it's not too overwhelming. And so I wouldn't worry about things like custom fields or rules. I wouldn't even necessarily get into portfolios and goals, all of that cool stuff, which is really exciting and we can look at that later. But in the beginning, we really want to show your team just the basics. So that would be things like the My Tasks page. This is the page that shows you everything assigned to you from all of the different tasks and projects that you're working on. So here's a task, it's got my name on it, and that's why I can see it on the My Tasks page. I would show everyone how to use this screen because uh, they need to know where to go to see their work. They also need to understand the inbox. This is the notification system of Asana. This is where they're gonna see the updates to tasks that they're working on. It's where they're gonna see comments. It's where they're gonna get notified about new tasks being created. And it really is an important area they'll need to be checking so that they are kept in the loop with all the important updates that are happening in the account. I would also show them just some of the simple things we can do inside of a task, like how to change the assignee, uh, the due date options where we can use start and end dates, how you can set tasks to repeat on a weekly basis. I would show them things like how to add new subtasks and how to comment on a task and, and uh, mention you know, other people. These are the things that every new user needs to know how to do, is how to plan their work using the My Tasks, how to keep up to date with what they're working on and, and the important changes via the inbox, and how to make simple updates to tasks. If that's all you, you cover in an initial training session with your team, I think that's a really good start. And again, more advanced features like portfolios and goals and rules, we can introduce those types of things later. So once you've got your account ready, you've got a, maybe a template for uh, one of your processes ready to go, and you've done some initial training where you've shown your team the basics that we just mentioned, next I would establish a go live date where we say, okay, on this day, on this you know Monday, the, the whatever, we're gonna go live with Asana. This is the day where we're not gonna be sending any internal emails anymore. We're not gonna be using Slack. We're gonna put all of our communication through Asana. If that's the decision that you've made or that's what you're gonna go with going forwards. But drawing a line in the sand and having like a go live date where it's, it's really official, it feels like this big important change, I find it just sets the expectation clearly that, hey, we're taking this tool seriously and on this date, you need to have Asana open, you need to be checking it. Now, even after you go live, some people are still gonna fall into old habits and they're gonna send you an email, you know, requesting something, and you're gonna think, oh, why didn't they put this in Asana? But what you can do if that happens is I would simply forward that email that they send you into Asana. And so you can do that by simply forwarding an email to this address, x at mail.asana.com. You can see the subject of the email will become the task name, the body will become the task description, and any attachments will be included as well. And so once you forward that email into Asana, you can add them as a collaborator, and then you can comment back and say, hey, you know, John, rather than emailing me, this is how you could have sent me a task in Asana. Uh, and then you can continue the conversation, you can continue the work in Asana rather than email. And so it's a really subtle way of bringing people back into Asana when they fall into those old habits. And finally, as the team continues to develop and get more confident with their use of Asana, then you can slowly introduce new features like the custom fields, rules, maybe tagging, uh, forms, goals, portfolios. There's lot, lots of other things we can play with and we can introduce those things later when the team is more confident. But in the early days, you wanna just be monitoring progress keeping an, uh, an eye on anyone that's maybe lagging behind, not using Asana that well, or, or just, uh, you know, again, falling back into the old way of doing things. 
It can be worth even doing a follow-up workshop with your team after a few weeks or a few months where you kind of assess how's it going, what do we like, what don't we like, are there any issues that we need to discuss as a team. And so overall, I just encourage people to be patient. We are talking about making big behavioral change to how your team operates. So be patient with your team, especially if you're a big, a larger organization where we're managing quite a few people and onboarding them to this tool. It can take a little while. And so I hope this video has been useful. Of course, if you would like help with onboarding your team to Asana, this is something we do with organizations all the time. So feel free to click the link in the description below to learn more about the consulting options that we offer. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.